Welcome everybody, we're gonna get started. Come on in, come on in, we're just getting started. Well, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight. It's nice to see a little crowd in person. Um, welcome to the BB School. My name is Amanda Lenahan. I'm the Ward 3 City Counselor, this side of town where the Malden Hospital is located. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be able to have an in-person community meeting with you tonight. We've had a few already on this project last year, but we haven't been in the neighborhood, so it's awesome to just see everybody out in the neighborhood at the school, and I appreciate you taking your time tonight. Um, we are going to have a quick presentation for you in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to go over a few words of thanks and appreciation and a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, so again, my name is Amanda Linehan. Um, we have our project partners here who in a minute will introduce themselves, but before we dive into that, I do just want to thank some of our local elected officials. Uh, we have Councillor Karen Colon-Hayes who's joining us here tonight. Thank you for making time to be out here with us. Um, uh, we have several representatives from different city departments who are going to be joining us when we move into question and answers. Hopefully if you have questions that they can help with, um, we'll be able to bring them on up. I also want to thank our mayor, Gary Christensen, who's been an amazing partner on this project really for the last five plus years as we've been trying to bring this to all of you. Um, so thanks to the mayor. I'd also like to thank our legislative delegation, our representatives, Paul Donato, Steve Altrino, and Caitlin Bergara-Bedian, as well as our state senator, Jason Lewis. Um, and I see a representative from Jason's office here tonight. Thank you so much for coming, Sarah. Um, I also just wanted to go over just a few housekeeping things so that folks know. Oh, did I miss somebody? I am so sorry. Our, my apologies. The mayor uh, of Medford, Brianna Lungo Kern, is joining us. Thank you so much for being here tonight. As you know, the parcel is in Malden and Medford, and so we deeply, deeply appreciate the partnership with our neighbors next door. Um, so as I was saying, just a few housekeeping items. Um, we ask that you silence your cell phones if possible. Um, if you do need to leave for whatever reason, leave early, use the restroom. We ask that you use the door down here instead of going through the back. Um, if you do need a bathroom, they are just around the corner on this floor, fully accessible. Um, we are gonna be taking questions at the end after we go through the presentation. So um, please just hold your hands while we're presenting and we will be able to bring down the microphone um, at the end of the presentation. So hold those questions till the end. And um, without further ado, I will pass it to Ryan Fuller from Tufts. Thank you, Counselor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this uh, milestone event in the history of, of Malden Hospital. Um, it's a very serious topic today as, as we talk specifics about demolition, but I, I did want to take a moment just to thank uh, the community, thank the delegation um, for working with us and what we've tried to do over the past couple of years is really, as Tufts Medicine, is reflect on what the community has told us, reflect on what we need to do as an organization to really advance our mission in caring for our communities, caring for you as our neighbors, and bringing more uh, value to the community. And that culmination and reflection really came, uh, that resulted into this project, and we're very excited about it. I will touch a little bit, just to highlight what this project is about, because I see some new faces tonight, Happy to see some old faces that have been working with us over the past couple years, uh, but very exciting to be at this point in this project, and I couldn't be more excited what this future holds. And I really look forward to getting into the specifics about demolition and, and hearing your questions. Uh, so tonight we'll be going through some uh, very detailed on the demo specifics, additional side activities, and we'll go into uh, how you can contact us, how you can stay uh, up to date with the project, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. It, thank you, Lori. Uh, and these slides will be posted uh, on our website, and you'll see the link later on. We'll, uh, we'll mail it out, and you'll see where you can sign up for our email address. Uh, and all of our community meetings, as the counselor mentioned, uh, we've had a few open sessions about this project, are all uh, online and available. So, talking today is uh, Lori Halley uh, from Melrose Wakefield Healthcare. She's our Director of Corporate Communications. Liz Bonick, uh, another member of the Tufts Medicine team, is our director in, uh, for facilities. Amy from Turner, and Rebecca, who she's covering the slides, but she'll also cover some, or moving the slides will also cover some of the context uh, later today. And uh, I did that on purpose. I made Sean last just to razz him. Uh, Sean Curran, uh, who many of the community members know, a uh, great member of our team, uh, working on the real estate development community relations. 
so again, as I mentioned, wanted to do just a bit around the use of what we're talking about today. And, and again, based on that reflection, we couldn't be more excited to return this site to healthcare use. When the Converse family and the other Maldonians of the time uh, dedicated the land, it was for open space and healthcare delivery as a hospital. Upon that reflection, we realized what the community wanted, what we needed as an organization, and are excited to bring healthcare back on the hill in the form of a behavioral health hospital. Through a joint venture, we are gonna build a 144 bed uh, inpatient, inpatient behavioral health hospital. It will bring around 80 net new beds to the Commonwealth, something that is sorely needed uh, across the Commonwealth. We will be moving some inpatient beds from Melrose Wakefield Hospital and Lawrence Memorial Hospital to this site for a purposely built behavioral health hospital. It's better care and we'll be, uh, be able to care for our patients in a much better way by having this purpose built new facility. In addition to that, we're continuing the legacy of the open space, adding nine acres of dedicated open space and, con open space and conservation land add to the wellness of our patients and add to the benefit of the community. A little bit about the hospital. Uh, we'll be serving patients of all ages, so adolescents, uh, pediatrics, adults, all the way to geriatric. It's gonna be licensed by the Department of Mental Health, just like the beds, the inpatient behavioral health beds are at Melrose Wakefield and Lawrence Memorial Hospital. So we're gonna be held to standards at the state level and federal level for, hosp for hospital care. There is, but there is no emergency room. This is a purposely built behavioral health hospital. There will be an ambulance bay for patient transfers, but there's not going to be uh, lights on, emergency care coming in, nor will there be walk-in services for patients. Everything will be scheduled. Scheduled admissions, scheduled outpatient activity. There's going to be limited outpatient activity, but it all is going to be scheduled. Okay? I mentioned that just to, again for people who don't, don't know much about the project. Um, in addition, it will be a teaching center of excellence. We couldn't be more excited uh, to be affiliated with Tufts uh, University School of Medicine and educating the next round of providers in behavioral health. A bit of a small grid here that you probably can't read uh, in the auditorium, but wanted to show one of the things we're doing is really decreasing the footprint from what is there today, a vacant 20-year hospital. Uh, but we're going from a uh, building footprint area of, of over 100,000 square feet to 30,000 square feet. Total square feet of almost 300,000 to 100,000. We're really reducing that footprint of the building size, again, for what's needed for the care delivery and adding that to open space and reducing the parking that you see today, going from 378 spaces to around 200. Again, we tried to be really considerate and think thoughtful of what the uh, residents have wanted, the stakeholders, and what we need to safely deliver care. The hospital project was approved by the Malden Planning Board recently, and we are working our way to uh, hopefully filing our demolition uh, permit here in the, in the near future, and we'll talk more about the timelines uh, in the next couple slides. So with that recap, I am going to hand it over uh, and get more into the specifics of the topic for demolition. Amy? So I'm going to apologize in advance for my microphone usage. I tend to be a little bit on the louder side, so I can't really imagine the last time I even used a microphone. So I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Um, I'll give you a little bit of info on myself as we, Turner Construction will sort of be your partner. Um, Turner Construction Company is a 100-year-old company. I've been with them for 24 years. I'm a construction executive. I've worked in uh, healthcare for the majority of that time, and outside of that, uh, within the healthcare industry, we always typically work in dense neighborhoods, um, all the way from you know down at Newton Wellesley Hospital. Um, we've done over in Medford Tufts Science and Engineering Center, so we are very accustomed to sort of planning and making sure that we're minimizing any dust, vibration, noise to the community, and also for the patients of those around us. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, what we're going to talk about tonight is a little bit about the timeline. I think everybody's very curious of what's going on. We're in the midst of some preparatory work right now. We're anticipating to start the structural demolition is where you'll visually start to see something in the mid to the end of October. Uh, that is estimated to be complete right around the first of the year, probably mid-January. The structural demolition itself will only take about eight weeks, and I can touch a little bit more about that then. 
So we're really only talking about for the next couple of months and then the new build for the new building is scheduled to start in January of 2024. So today, as we had mentioned, we're just talking a little bit about the demolition process. Uh, in regards to working hours for the process, we are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we don't anticipate nor plan for doing any weekends. Our schedule doesn't you know, allow for that. We don't anticipate it. There's absolutely no need. Um, parking is probably a big one as well. I'm gonna sort of, sorry if I turn my back to you. Um, I'll get to the slide a little bit to show where the site fencing is going to be surrounding. There will be no trucks idling on the street. Any of the contractor parking will all be within the uh, site fence. We're only anticipating a peak of probably about 60 workers, and a lot of them tend to commute together. Um, we're also trying to do a lot of prefabrication for the new building, once again, uh, skipping a little bit ahead, but we're trying to do whatever we can to minimize traffic to the area. During the demolition process, the roadways will remain open. Uh, everyone that passed the road continue to go down. If there is an event at some point where we may need to close the road for a couple of hours or minimize the lane width, we'll have a police detail. And we'll make sure that we provide an update on the community website as well as reach out to the local agencies. I mentioned so DEP, EPA, and all of our state and federal legislations were all followed under those requirements. Um, our structural engineer has actually come out to the building. We've walked all of the interior floors. We've looked at the slab and the column and beam construction. What we've put together is a very sequenced operation um, that has been analyzed and stamped by a professional engineer to ensure that we are doing it in a safe and methodical manner. From there, um, as part of all of this, as I can get into one of the other slides, uh, we've hand-selected both our equipment uh, to minimize any type of dust and vibration, sorry, dust and minimize the dust, and then also for the equipment to minimize the noise on site. And I think the last thing to mention, um, one of the, the great things is the waste stream. So any of this debris that is leaving the site, we have set up a partnership. So our target is to recycle at least 75% of that. So we're not just, you know, sort of dumping it out and taking it away. We'll hope, you know, hope to get some creative aspects there. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, if everyone's familiar, here is Hospital Road. On the back side is the Medford line in the parking lot that sits behind the hospital. You'll see that this black line dashed here is where you'll have your fence surrounding. So that's the main building. We'll have fencing around the nurses and the boiler buildings as well. There'll be a couple of areas with my nice little snippet. You probably won't be able to see it there. It's a little, it's a little guy with a construction fence. So those will be set back. Those gates will remain closed. We've coordinated with Malden and Malden Fire and Police to make sure that they have access to those gates. And then as we mentioned, there'll be no trucks idling on the street. So as they pull in, they'll go th right, right through those construction gates into the site. One thing to note, um, if you go a little bit to the left, that little black and white image, we have a truck wash. So as the trucks are within the site, before they leave, there's an actually an operation to hose down all of the tires to ensure that we're not trying to, we're minimizing any type of dust leaving the site. We do have security cameras currently set up, a little camera image as of right now, uh, that is for security purposes. And uh, I think that's a little bit, we can go to the next slide. All right, so what you see here is the main building as it exists today. So what you, I mentioned that we're going to do the demolition in a very sequential manner because we can't just go take it all at one time. Um, as we mentioned, we have equipment. What we're going to consider to do, I'm going to use the explanation of munching. It's a grapple arm. So instead of a wrecking ball or some type of um, blasting of the sort, it's almost think of a little like, like, a, like a little thing that just sits there and munch. So it's, it's a pretty quiet operation compared to the other methodology and we're gonna go from one side of the building to the other. As part of the overall setup, where we had mentioned that we have the site fences, we have our erosion control. So this is part of all of our, you know, the EPA, DEP requirements, hay bales, site fence, and what this does is help prevent runoff from the site. Um, I think we'll just move 
move on because we can address some of that questions. And then what we wanted to do here is give you a little bit of a visual of after the demolition is complete, what you will see as it comes to new construction. So this is an image up in the top right hand corner. Uh, this is if they had the steel erection as the new structure is going up. And I think that might be it. And we want to get a little bit into detail possibly on the pest abatement. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Jablonowski, and I'm a project manager. I'm an owner's project manager for Tufts Medicine, and I'm going to talk about the pest abatement today. I know this is a significant concern, not only for the team that's up here, but also for the community. Um, I was one of the people that walked through the building in the beginning of the project to go and see the conditions inside of the building, really start to understand how to remove the, uh, the building and bring in the construction team. And I firsthand saw what was inside of the building and one of my main concerns was pest control and abatement of the pests. What I was very happy to see over the past couple of months is we started um, pest control early so we're supposed to do this two weeks prior to demolition. We started it three months in advance. So we've started to really review the trending of what is inside of the building, what we could anticipate to see, and what we're seeing is a lot less than what we anticipated. It's significantly less, in fact. So we brought in Turbinex to do interior and exterior trapping. And with the food source within that building being gone for multiple decades, so by food source I mean uh, kitchenettes, cafeteria, anything that rodents would typically eat in any of these three buildings. With this being gone for multiple decades, the population that we have in the space is very, very thin, which is great. Um, so proactive measures internally and externally, and we're following the requirements of the city for those, those uh, trappings. So early assessments, that's the, the 20 years of eliminated food source. Um, pest abatement will continue throughout the demolition process. So the demolition process, as Amy mentioned, will be towards the end of the year. And we can get into more specifics of the pest abatement when we get into, into the question and answer session, session. But I think what's important is that both of the cities want to be involved in any questions that you have or any activities that you see. We're expecting the activities to be quite minimal because of the trending that we've seen so far. But this copy of these slides will be sent out um, on the website for everyone to use. And we have telephone numbers here for the Board of Health for both of the cities. Rebecca, thank you. So just very quickly, we know that everyone is interested in um, how can we stay informed, how can we stay connected um, on this process over the coming months, weeks, and months. So um, again, we will be sending out this information, so you will, ha you will have it. But we do have um, a, a couple of resources for you. So we will continue the website page where we um, continuously update with the latest information. Um, on what is happening. Um, and we will be working very closely with Turner and, and their teams um, and keeping us abreast of what is going on that may be significant and may be of, of interest. And then I will continue along with the team members to, to email our distribution list. Um, at the end of the evening, I do, if you haven't signed up for our email distribution list, I really encourage you to do so. You can do it through the website. If you're a paper and pen person, I have paper and pen here. Um, but we do encourage you to do that. And, um, you know, we will just have updates on that website. We encourage you to um, just check on it from time to time. But usually um, you can expect that if it's something significant, it will be preceded by an email. So it's in your email box. So we very much appreciate. We've got a lot of good questions in advance of this meeting tonight, which was very helpful for us. I think we're going to have a, some really good answers for you and good discussions. And uh, with that, I think we will turn it over. Mark. Just mention the email address if you have a specific question. Oh, yes, 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 I'm sorry. So if um, I'm sorry, Rebecca, if we go back. Continue, uh, I think, um, community at tuftsmedicine.org. You can email that address anytime. 
Um, it does go through a couple of people. We will take those questions and we will um, direct them to the best resource, depending on what the question is. Give us a couple of days to respond, but it's usually because we want to make sure we're getting the most and current information from the right expert. So, thank you. All right, and with that, I guess questions. And I, I will go down there. I'll give this back to you. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're going to have Lori come down. Um, if anybody has any questions, though, and wants to raise their hand, if you feel comfortable shouting it out, I can repeat that back, um, and we can sort of field that. If you'd rather Lori come to you. Yes, way up in the maroon shirt. So the question is, will the, 20, will the security guard that's been on site continue? Uh, no, there is not at this time. Uh, we have our security cameras, which we've had constant contact with Malden Police. Uh, everything is censored. They've actually, uh, we've had multiple occasions where they've responded uh, during the night to some rowdy activity. Um, in speaking with them, though, they've also added additional rounds during both the day and evening shifts. And just to reiterate to that, while the security guard is not there 24-7, the multiple cameras are running 24-7 and notifying Turner in, anytime anything happens. And we have that Turner has a close collaboration with police. Any other questions? Yes, right here. Okay, so the question is remediation of hazardous materials on the inside. Yes, uh, so due to the nature of the building and the age, uh, there is some abatement that needs to happen, uh, remediation of material. Uh, so that has been prepared um, in conjunction with the DEP and the respective standards as part of the abatement, uh, if we want to call it, it's not necessarily uh, considered a hazardous material, but there is some asbestos and what is contained there is a full containment uh, negative pressure. And what the negative pressure does is it keeps everything within the building and outside of the airstream. Um, I think a, a, a number or a few of you may have noticed a generator outside that generator during the demolition process has been uh, due to the inability of getting uh, temporary power from National Grid. The importance of that is also to have dependable 24 hour um, power to those negative pressures to make sure that nothing gets out. Uh, we've actually had two visits um, from the department, from the DEP. In addition, we have two third party industrial hygienists. Um, so they, we have independent. So we have one consultant that actually checks on the other consultant and that consultant checks on us. Um, so they are there actually full time. Uh, they do all the air monitoring, air clearances. Uh, they go over things from checking the filters, uh, a worker certification. Um, we have a buddy system to go inside the building um, because only certain people can go and train pe individuals can go inside the containment in and outside of the day. So I'm not sure if that addresses. Okay. I'm just going to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, way up in the back of the Where will the trucks be entering? Where will the trucks be entering? Gotcha. Uh, the trucking route that's been coordinated is East Fellsway to Sabin. You want to check? Yes. I will say that it, that is not the intent, and what you see right now is actually a traffic map, and all of the haulers for any of the material for our trade partners have received this and they have um, the right routing and basically it's been expressed that there's a zero tolerance policy, zero tolerance, po zero, oh, let me try this again, <laughs> zero tolerance policy for trucking. The one thing I will note though that there are other activities, um, either the DPDW or the city, um, there are a couple of road closures, there may maybe one in a thousandth be a, a, a chance because there is, you know, a detour that needs to happen, but as of right now, that is... Can you walk Rover Road Which road? Rover Road, right behind the emergency right there. I have not. Okay, and 
And we walked on Marmy Hill Road. Yes. Which is, so you can't get one car by there now. It's a nightmare in the morning. It's a nightmare at night. I don't care what people's traffic have to say. The mayor put up two signs. No right hand turn, seven to nine. First of all, I live up there, so I have to take the right hand turn both ways. People don't follow directions. So it may not be a nightmare for Malden, but it's a nightmare for Medford. Noted. And your employees, too. When the hospital was open, I was, when I thought my house there was a hospital there, I have no complaints that you're putting another hospital back there. I'm a nurse, I'm all far. But the parking and the traffic is a nightmare. And there's rats there now in the woods. So uh, maybe let me put a little bit of um, comfort to you. So if we're talking about the trucks, we're talking maybe at this point during the demolition, uh, one to two trucks every two days or so. We're not talking constant deliveries. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Are we talking about pest abatement? Yes. No. Do you want to Sorry, it's over the stairs, but we're trying to tell you. The mayor knows that, too. You want to spend your own shit on these lines? Understood. So I think the slide that we went to, Rebecca can help address it. The pest abatement that we're doing right now inside the existing hospital, there is very minimal activity that is being addressed now. Sorry, I'll step in real fast. So the request from the cities, it was very specific that the abutters, that the neighbors need to call the city. So they want to help manage the process and they will come out to you, do an inspection and then help with what, however situationally each homeowner needs to deal with the, deal with the, the situation. But that's not something that the hospital will be involved in. That'll be something that the hospital will be involved in with the city, but you need to call each of the cities individually, depending on where you live. It's the city specifically that you live in is the request from the cities. So we can get clarification from the Board of Health, Mayor. I believe the way it happens is if you call the Board of Health, depending on where you live, and if it's determined by the Board of Health that the, if there is rodent activity, if it's caused by demolition, then we'll work with the uh, Board of Health on that. Now, that it has to be clear, again, it's not our determination, it's the Board of Health, that it's caused by the hospital demolition. Do I have that right, Nelson? <laughs> We'll pull the census. <laughs> so I get, as I reiterate two two points. One is if you believe there's a, if there is activity at your at your house, call the board of health and they will make the determination if it's caused by the hospital. And I will reiterate that we started pest abatement three months in advance than what we were required, and we have seen a lot less activity than what we ever anticipated, and Terminex anticipated, and we still started three months in advance on purpose. That's not the hospital. Even if they, and I believe, from my limited knowledge of rats, 
they can travel a certain distance to get food and come back to their little house. So that's just my take on it, because I see rats all the time. In the woods, walk my dog at night with the rest of the staff parking lot of the ED. So um, not my first time to really go with this. No, I appreciate I appreciate the comments. Um, we will you know, take it back and see what we can talk about with Terminix and the, and the Board of Health. But I certainly understand the, the concern I've heard from a few people is about rodent activity within the woods now. Well, certainly we have exterior and interior bait, uh, uh, abatement going on. Uh, we will understand and talk with Terminix about anything that can be possible within the woods. Um, I, I would echo the, the thanks for the questions. This is why we're doing this. We want to know where the pain points are. Um, obviously, I can always speak to the city of Malden. I know that we are trying to take a very data-based approach to tracking rat activity, whether it's from the hospital or not. So I think one of the reasons that we want to have folks call the city is so that our city health department can paint a holistic picture of everything going on encompassing this site and pre-existing rat activity. We do have a program and some funds that go with it that we can help homeowners. So I would say for um, residents of Malden, that's something that you could reach out to me, or please do call the Board of Health if you don't hear back from them. You know, might have business cards right here. Anybody wants one at the end of the night, I'm happy to give those out and can coordinate with the Board of Health. And then I did just want to touch on um, the traffic and parking issues that came up before we got into the rats a little bit. We have heard loud and clear that folks are looking for more clear detour signs and uh, details a little bit further out from the property. That's feedback that we've already all shared and we're going to be working on that. I know several folks have already told me that they'd like to have a little bit more warning before they get up into the hospital neighborhood if there's going to be impacts from construction or road narrowing. So we are going to be working on that and I just wanted to point that out and not lose track of that question as well. And just to underscore that, Councillor, I think it's a it's a great point. We're committed to you know throughout the project, you know, working with you and the p police detail on you know our traffic patterns and traffic plans throughout the entire project because they will change in this dynamic. Yeah. Well, on that traffic pattern, you're using the the Beltway East as part of the route. That is a DCR owned road, Parkway, and it may have restrictions on what types of vehicles. Understood. Yes, very familiar with the DCR and the permitting process and the regulations. I mean, so we'll be following when, it all. Yeah. When you <laughs> Sorry. When we want to put the, the deaconess component up, the, 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 track, the, the track route was down south to Highland to Pleasant and then dispersing from there using local streets as opposed to using the DCR on Brooklyn. Now, I don't know if you've got permits to go on that road. Also, as I noted in my email that I sent you, Westwater Road is also a DCR road, too. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect to see any trucks going on Westwater Road. Uh, so not from us, that is correct. I, I, I did mention, um, you know, what we've propagated to the our individuals and those working for us, the approved trucking routes. Um, I can't speak on behalf of other construction work that's going on in the area. So what I would suggest is if you happen to see a truck with a name on it, please take down the name, uh, send over an email, place a phone call, and then we can obviously see where that work is originating from. And if I could follow up on that, on that very point that you're bringing up, is there, on, in my email, I also asked about what is the, uh, what is the communication process where I notice as an abutter on West Border Road, the trucks are running down the street or something else is going on, like your generators are running all night. What is your contract? What is the party that I can contact instead of calling Amanda about this? <laughs> so there is the, um, I'm sorry, do you want to bring up the email address? So the community at toughsmedicine.org. Are uh, you going to have a resident uh, engineer on the site for the, during the demolition process? No, the plan has been already been reviewed and approved by an engineer. There's no need, um, there is no required need for a registered engineer. During the demolition? Correct. During the construction also? Correct. Okay. We are the construction manager. We manage all of the trade partners that we work with. A lot of times they have on-site Yes, that is a that is a, that is a little bit different um, than a registered engineer. 
we will continue, we will have full time during work hours, full time superintendent during the site. I'm sorry, I, I apologize. I misunderstood your question. He has the joy of the security campus going to his cell phone. So he is there every day. So the question is regarding the use of the generator on the site, if I understand correctly, the duration. Uh, yes, as of right now, there is still a request for temporary power. Um, unfortunately, we don't believe that we will have it on site prior to the demolition. I will say with the generators, we've used tier four engines. So those are of the, the most strict capability uh, per the EPA. Um, for very instances like this, where they're in very dense neighborhoods, adjacent to laboratories, um, hospitals, et cetera. So those will remain until the abatement is complete. I would say that those are probably gonna remain live until say approximately the middle of October. Yep. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the crunching machine. Yes. <laughs> There'll be no blasting. No. Yes. It will not. Correct. So, as part of the dust, um, we what we do is we're, we uh, our trade partner who's GDC. We pre-wet all of the material, and then we use misting during the construction operations. So the dust that anything that's airborne already is wetted down. And then as we continue the work, we have continuous water going to keep anything from going further into the airstream. Yes? What about the coyotes? Do you believe that the coyotes are coyotes? Uh, they exist in the wildlife? <laughs> this is, that one's beyond my capability. Uh, Rebecca will take it. Sorry. Take it. <laughs> I think its name is Wiley. <laughs> That's I get the fun part of the presentation. So um, it's coyotes and turkeys. So what Terminex, what we are not able to do is maintain the coyote population. So um, actually, Ryan, help me. So is it uh, Board of Health or the Police Department that needs to be called when coyotes are discovered? Or a council, which you know? I, I believe it was the police. But let me find out more about that, and then we can post that on the website. I'm saying head shaking in both directions. So let me find out more, and I'll get back to you about the coyotes. We're not allowed to maintain them, not through term and exit, based. We do believe that there is a den. We don't know where it is. We don't know if it's on the property or off the property, but I believe people have heard them. So determining where they are is, is important. Yeah, so Amy, uh, correct me if I'm wrong or anything, but from the truck parking, everything will be on site, will not be using Savage Street. As the operator, meaning Tufts Medicine, uh, and some of the work we're doing uh, on Savage Street, is we try and move, best of our ability, moving that, uh, if they're employee or patients parking on Savage Street, to the parking lot that's across, that's a part of the, the nursing home, which is controlled by Tufts Medicine. So to answer your question specifically, the trucks coming in will not be using uh, Savage Street, 
And if, for whatever reason, if we need to remove parking spaces that's being used by Tufts Medicine on Saturday, we will do so and move them to the parking lot because there is enough capacity there. Parking lot meaning for the outpatient facility, yeah, yeah. not the hospital. Yes, sir. I know this is the demolition meeting, but I wanted to move briefly to the uh, construction component. In the, one of the schematics that you guys had, we had a, a massive retaining wall with a power plant in that. And, I, and further uh, schematics that seem to be gone. So is it gone or is it not? Happy to say we listened to the feedback and have removed that retaining wall and reduced the size of that parking lot so we do not have a need for it. Thank you. Have that right, Liz? We're talking about the, that parking lot big retaining wall. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. So just to clarify with the whole munching machine, I've been on many details for the demo, and we call it a clear shop. Grabs, shoes. At any one time during the demo, will there be more than one of those operating? <laughs> I can't say uh, yes or no as of this moment. Right now, we do not intend to be. Um, I can further look into that and get back to you, though. I don't want to misgive you my word. Also, with as far as wetting down the piles, I know a lot of waste removals frown upon that for wetting it down because they pay by the ton to dispose of this. And when it's wet, it's significant. It's a different category than soil removal, yeah. so it's going to a different facility. So that's not an issue here. Yes. So after you like wet it down, is, how are you planning on controlling the wastewater so it doesn't stream off the site? Um, I'm not, if we can, so there is erosion control that goes around the perimeter. So you'll typically see that like orange site fence, and then you'll see the hay bales around the perimeter. And so this is sort of a little picture of what you'll see. And then each of the gates we mentioned has a truck wash. So that'll have almost a little bit of a berm and a bladder. So that sort of remains untouched as well. So we'll show, and if we're talking about the misting for the demolition, we're not talking fire hose. We're talking just enough water just to keep it down. Yes? Is the ground safe to walk on with all the I'm sorry? Would the ground still be safe to walk on? In uh, regards to soil integrity? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I know there was some talk about drilling thermal, um, geothermal wells. Is, it going, is that going to happen? It's right there. To the left. You can't read it, but that's what we're going to do. So there will be some drilling, but not less. Uh, potentially, we think that that might be off the table. Um, phase two is still under final design. They're looking at different alternatives with conventional HVAC. But if there is, it is a drilling operation, um, we're not talking a big, loud, uh, vibratory drill. It's a very contained, slow, quick, efficient operation. But at this moment in time, we don't believe that's going to be incorporated into the new build. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, it is. So the hospital is actually going to be closer to that bit. Uh, there's an actually, I, uh, yeah, do you want to, so do you want to go? So the hospital the as it stands right now, that's not where the hospital is going to be. It is, but I think as Ryan mentioned, maybe it goes to go back to this, yeah, that's probably the best slide. So that is the new. So it's closer to the nursing. So the orange, the orange I wouldn't say it's closer because that road. Glenridge is right there, the existing nursing home. Shown in that top right corner. Yeah. So is the parking lot in the front now in, a, in, a, in this proposed building is closer to 
that. Correct. It's to a hospital road, road in the, in the building. building. So, road, road in Edgar, we have the, the, the tree line. Yes. Close that to the method side of road, road. Did you, okay. did you propose that? Yeah. So we don't, um, I have a schematic, but I still have it with me that, that explains it better. It is in some of our old presentations. I can try and dig it up and, and send it out. But to answer your question to the best of my ability, Grover Road in that wooded area that's in Medford, that is staying that way. We're... I'm not asking about Grover Road. I'm asking you how close the building yeah. is because probably the Long Hospital and the Medford Road are closer to the Yep. So now it seems like it's taking a going in the back corner. So, so what I can do is we can have an existing overlay with the new hospital so it answers that clearly. I don't think it goes back as far as, as we're anticipating, but we'll get that out. We can add it to the appendix of these slides and send it out. How far away is the woods from the hospital? That, that's, I'll, I will get the schematic and, and send it out. I don't think it's much different than the like, from the, you're not pushing the tree line. I'm not definitely not pushing the tree line. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's changing that much from the physical footprint. But let's send it out so everyone can see. And the access road is that key. And the access road of Grover Road will continue as it is today. But the road behind the new building, there will be a whole road, there will be a whole access. I'm going to say drive. Point. There's a ring road around the new facility. So there's that before you even get to the building. That's right. There's an access road. That's not that, that could close that. No, it's closed. It's supposed to stay closed. That's correct. It is. Yeah. I mean, the guy from the hospital locks the security. Well, he shouldn't now because he's not there. But if that's happening, certainly Amy will know that will be a part of the game. So we'll follow up specifically on that. I mean, our intent is, however Grover Road is today, is staying how it is. And, I, and I'm pleased about that. I'm pleased about the tree line. What I'm more concerned about is how close is this building back and up to the tree line. Un understood. You're giving us something. You're giving us something by keeping the woods, but you're also benefiting from backing it up and onto, you know, technically close to the end of the uh, under, understood. I apologize. We don't have the schematic here again. We, we will send that out. Um, and it, it is a. I understand your concern. A question about how far back it goes closer to the Medford line. That. The, correct. So the the comment was we have our parking spaces in front, and the hospital is pushed back. So that is correct, and that is done on purpose from a, a safety perspective. A. B, let's also not forget that we're reducing, we're more than, you know, reduced, re, sorry, 60% reduction in the size of the facility that is there today, so it's greatly smaller. Uh, and again, my miss on not having the schematic. Yes, sir. Well, I know we're, we're jumping all over the place, but uh, when, as we're talking roads now, the hospital road and the Savin Street alignment moves that would go east drops eastward. Have you ever thought about moving that road closer to the front of the hospital and increasing the space between the park and the road? Do you know the specifics of Hospital Road? So there, there will be some redesign of Hospital Road as part of Phase Two. I don't have the specifics of that, but I it will. I would call it's it still under uh, review and design. Un, under review and hopefully a bit more modern. I mean, you can see it right on that. Yep. On that drawing right now. I mean, that dip that occurs on the road. You won't need that dip. 
Correct. Because our hospital won't be there, it'll be set back. As our mentor folks continue to talk about, the building will be set back closer to the Grover Street. Correct. Um, is it, uh, a, a redesign of Hospital Road is under consideration for Phase 2, and as those plans get finalized, we'll certainly share them and get approvals as needed, but share those with the community as well. Yep, so large milestones like that and major activity and disruptions will be shared on our website and our email address and we'll certainly be coordinated with the counselor. So I encourage you to see Lori to sign up or sign up yourself. My concern on that is I put this 500 like 500 feet from the hospital. So I would So, yeah, and so um, what I can say is first, thank you for talking to your neighbors and, and engaging them because we can't hit everyone. We can certainly talk, Lori and I can go back and see what else can we do. And from other projects, we, you know, it, and Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, it may say we're going to start a major activity sometime early this week. It may not be a specific day, but, but we'll, get it, we'll get it out as much notice as we can within a range of certainty. I'm going to take you up on that, Sarah. <laughs> um, and I was just going to say that we did get a little bit of feedback on the list of abutters. I know that some houses that fell just short of that range, it's a super dense neighborhood, so even if we met the requirements of notifying everybody within a certain radius, it just missed some houses that are kind of ridiculous that I'm totally aware of that and hear that, and I'm going to, you know, hand flyering was going to be my next thing. So I will call you when we get to that point. Um, but I am also going to say that we're trying to get more city alerts to go out about the project as things like that happen. So speaking just from Malden, we do have a city alert system that we can, you know, you may have gotten a notice about this meeting through that. If you're not signed up for it, I can help you get signed up for those. But that's something that we have the ability to push to people's phones. I do find it's pretty effective with new residents in particular, but I agree with you completely. That old fashioned door to door is usually the best thing just to make sure. And then, um, Mayor Lindo Kern, did you want to add anything to that? I saw you waving your hand. Okay, great. And just to say on that topic, right now we are targeting the end of October and we will continue to share that information on the website and the other avenues that we have. The only reason we have a target of early October, or sorry, mid-October, is we're trying to uh, try and get ahead of the winter weather to possibly elongate the process. 
Um, it is dependent on the interior gut of the building. If we have the opportunity to, we would love to start a little bit early and we make sure that we communicate that, but that's why there's such a little bit of a big window right now. I, I, I totally, totally understand that. Like, I, I get that. But that even sounds I also love that. We appreciate it. And as the project moves on as well, I'm going to definitely stay close in touch. And if we feel like we need to bring this group back together again, we can certainly do that. Um, just, you know, give a holler and give me that feedback, and I'll be happy to talk it over. Any other questions? Yes, right here with the pink shirt. structural integrity we did as I mentioned we had engineers evaluate it if we get to a point where we feel that equipment or something may be a little bit too adjacent to the road for extra precautions um, we may need to possibly minimize the width of the road with a police detail but that's something we'll communicate ahead of time but as of right now we don't anticipate any disruptions to traffic flow yes I'm sorry These two other buildings, so on the other side of, so 57 Hospital? Yeah, right. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. 178, which is, uh, no. that facility will stay. Where Malden Family Health is, et cetera. Oh, we got one more. I was going to give a last call for questions. <laughs> so, as far as hybrids go up there, will there be any reconfiguration of water supply for hybrid supplies? Yeah. For them? I cannot tell you for, uh, I know that we've evaluated uh, the existing hydrants. Those will all remain operational. Um, I believe based on what I know, which is very preliminary on the, the design for phase two, is um, whatever we have right now for hydrants should be sufficient flow to be able to service the, the new surroundings. But I'm unsure of if there will be any type of reconfiguration. And when you, what did you do to test them? Oh, we, we did a, a, well, we have the hydrant locations as well, but we're talking about the line, uh, the circular route, so we scanned to ensure that the as builds that we had from the city were indeed correct. As far as, so did you do anything for gallons per minute? We did not test any of the hydrants as they're existing. Yes? How many cars a day do you anticipate coming to park Once the new facility is operational, I'm, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know we talked about it at the uh, special permit hearing. Um, I, we can, I can get your information afterwards and, and email you that, that answer. I'd have to go look. It's around 200 parking spaces, uh, 188 parking spaces, which will be on site, and that will uh, sufficiently cover patients and uh, staff. And it ex exceeds the city uh, requirement for parking. Now, it confused me a little bit about phase one and phase two. You from Turner. I don't quite get what phase one and phase two is. I apologize. That's my confusion. Uh, as we we have contract, we have separated in two. So phase one is the demolition. The demo. And then phase two is the new construction. I apologize. I'm so accustomed to using the terminology. I forget that others are And that construction aware. is going to be January 24 to hopefully somewhere 25. That is the goal. Okay. Opening sometime early 2025. No, no, no. 
Early 26. 26. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you tell them it's getting late for me. Yeah. Yes. And obviously, if you have medical emergency something, you will be calling 911 for somebody. Yes. So you've got to initiate a response from the ambulance and call the fire department. Yes. Okay. You will have people there overnight. Some extended stay, maybe? Uh, you're saying during the demolition? No, on the road. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh. The building's done in 2026. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, so that it will be a, a hospital stay. So patients will be staying, call it on average, seven days. Um, there will be you know, clinical providers on site, and then in case of medical emergency, 911 will be initiated, and we will transfer into an emergency department. Most likely Melrose Wakefield or Tufts Medical Center, uh, given the relationship uh, that the facility will have. Uh, no, um, and I. The, yes, the, their patients. Um, they will not be roaming the facility. It is, and we have additional slides from the previous presentations that I encourage you to, to go look and uh, but to answer your question specifically secure facility um, that our managing partner it's a joint venture uh, they run hospitals like this all across the country they have one in Massachusetts with South Coast Health uh, we visited multiple times uh, so it's secure entrance secure entrance to the uh, patient floors to the main entrance again that's why it's important to have the parking out front there is outdoor space uh, for the patients which is which is a great thing, but it is enclosed and completely secure. Yeah. I don't know if I know the answer to that, but I would say it's Monday through City Hall hours. Monday, Monday. Yeah, the, we, we do have someone that checks the kind of the emergency line at City Hall so if you call in at, after hours or do a C quick fix there is one person that does check that um, I, I hope that we don't get to that point but yeah did you have a related question to that or okay I will say that almost all, certainly department heads are available on Fridays if an emergency were to arise. I don't think, we, the, the city hall hours will not be a limitation if something that's truly urgent comes up. And again, you can always reach out to me, um, but the city does check that line after hours as well. So someone will, will be able to get back to you. Way, way in the back. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, those are I, I, not to sort of pass pass the buck, but that's an existing condition. And if it's on the Medford, I would um, suggest you reach out to Walden Fire Department and ask them to come check some of the flows. The reason I'm saying we are not checking the flows, um, it is not required um, as part of the demolition process. We are not actively using the hydrants. Um, they're there accessible to the fire department, but they're not being used during the process. Did you Medford or Malden? Malden. Okay. Counselor said that she'll look into it.
Brady. Uh, I will thank you all for your time. Um, it's, it's very nice to see all of the community involvement and the care and the passion of this neighborhood. So we truly look forward to uh, having the partnership over the next couple of years. And thank you, Amy, so much for everything that you were able to share tonight. Thank you all for coming, and thank you to Uma for filming. Check the city website and share with anybody who couldn't make it. Thank you so much. Urban Media Arts.